Okay, today I'm going to do one example of locating extrema and points of inflection. Um, the function that I'm going to be working with here is going to be x e to the x. Alright, first thing I'm going to need to do is calculate the derivative. Hopefully you see that there is a product right there, so it is going to involve product rule when I do my derivative here. Alright, so f prime of x is going to be equal to the first times the derivative of the second. I'm going to actually use ddx notation here in this first line. ddx of e to the x plus the second, which is e to the x, times ddx of x. Alright, going through, taking the derivative here. If you remember the formula for derivative of e to the u, it's e to the u u prime. Alright, derivative up there, my u would be a 1. So I will have an x times e to the x and I'm going to go ahead and put in that 1, even though it's not necessary on this step, just to show you there's the e to the u, u prime, plus e to the x. Derivative of x there is going to be 1. All right, let's clean that up just a little bit. So then f prime of x is going to be equal to x e to the x plus e to the x. All right, now if I'm trying to find extrema, I need to set that equal to 0, all right, and solve. So I'm going to set this equal to 0 x e to the x plus e to the x equals 0. I'm going to factor out an e to the x, e to the x, and then that's going to be times the quantity of x plus 1. All right, now it's factored, so now I can set each of these equal to 0. All right, something that you always need to uh, realize here, e to the x, all right, can never equal 0. All right, I would set it equal to 0, but it can't be equal to 0. You can think of that two ways. If you remember the graph of e to the x, all right, it goes up, all right, okay. Um, so then you know it can't be 0 there because it's going to have that, that um, horizontal asymptote. You can also remember that e is um, about 2.71, all right. So if I raised it to the 0 power, I'd get 1. If I raised it to the first, I'd get 2.71. If I raised it to a negative 1, I'd get 1 over 2.71. So e to the x can never equal 0 on that. All right, setting the other part equal to 0, I'm going to have x equal to negative 1. Okay, so there is a critical point. Okay, so let's label that as critical point. All right, now I need to uh, put that on a number line, create a number line, so that I can find my extrema. Okay, so I'm going to put negative 1 on my number line. Intervals there would be from negative infinity to negative 1 and negative 1 to positive infinity. All right, plugging into my first derivative. All right, so if I plug a negative into my first derivative, let's do it right about here. All right, you would go through, calculate that, and you would see that it would end up being a negative. Okay, and plugging in, let's plug in 0 would probably be the easiest. Plugging in 0 into that first derivative, you're going to see that it is a positive. All right, from there, your original function, then that means the original function is decreasing from negative infinity to negative 1 and increasing from negative 1 to infinity. So that gives us a minimum at x equals negative 1. And so um, let's do that as an ordered pair so that we can actually find the point on the graph. The minimum then, then would be negative 1. This would need to be plugged back into the original function there. Um, and that's going to give me a negative 1 over an e. All right, so I have a minimum value for my extrema on this function. All right, now points of inflection, you need to calculate your second derivative. So right here was my first derivative. So we'll be looking at that to calculate um, our second derivative. Okay, so second derivative. All right, in this uh, first part right here, hopefully you're seeing there is a product right there, so it's product rule, but that is the original function that we had right there, so there's no reason to calculate that again. When I take the derivative of this right here, I will have this right here. So I'm going to do an x e to the x plus e to the x, all right? Now, derivative of e to the x is going to be e to the u, u prime, so I'll have an e to the x and then times 1. All right, so simplifying this a little bit here, there's a need the x, there's a need the x. That means I have two of them, so I can add them together, and I can get an x e to the x plus 2 e to the x. So that's my second derivative. 
All right, you're going to need to again set that equal to zero. All right, so I would probably factor out an e to the x. All right, so let's go ahead and do that all in that same line. So e to the x getting factored out will give me an x plus a 2, and we'll be setting that equal to zero so that um, we can find our possible points of inflection. Right here again, I'm setting e to the x equal to zero, and that cannot happen. And so over here, I'm going to have an x equals a negative 2. So I've got one possible point of inflection there. All right, drawing our number line. We'll have a negative 2. Intervals of negative infinity to negative 2. Negative 2 to infinity. All right, testing values in my second derivative. If I plug in a negative here in the second derivative, um, I'm going to see that it is less than 0. Plugging in, probably zero is going to be the easiest. Plugging in a zero there, I can see that my second derivative will be positive. That will tell me then that my original function is concave down on this interval and concave up on this interval. So yes, indeed, that is a, a point of inflection. So I've got a point of inflection at negative 2, and then plugging that back into that original function right there, um, negative 2 over e squared. All right, so one example um, of a function with a, an e to the x in it of where I'm locating extrema and points of inflection.